There are no legal consequences for the U.S., so it can impose sanctions on anyone. And this, this weaponization of the dollar has made the people of Cuba suffer for over 60 years, has made the people of the DPRK suffer for decades, the people of Zimbabwe and Eritrea, now Syria, people are suffering. It, it did massive damage to the Venezuelan economy, leading to hyperinflation, leading to tens of thousands of preventable deaths. And, and now we see these aggressive sanctions on Russia, but there's a big difference. Russia is not a small country. Russia is a massive country with a significant economy. And trying to impose those sanctions on a country like Russia showed the limits of the ability of Western sanctions and has accelerated this pro process of creating a new international financial system. So the irony is that by overusing the sanctions weapon, the U.S. dollar, the U.S. government has been slowly chipping away at its own dollar hegemony. In, in financial institutions working in banks and markets, they recognize that we are moving toward a multipolar world. Now, the political class in the so-called West, in Washington and Brussels, they refuse to acknowledge this because they insist on maintaining this unipolar order in which Western colonial powers dominate the world, can extract the resources of global south, can exploit, exploit cheap labor, and face no consequences. So I did a report that's very related to this back over at geopoliticaleconomy.com. At that time, it was Multipolarista, but all the links at Multipolarista have now forwarded to geopoliticaleconomy.com. I will link to this in this report in the description below. And this was about the International Monetary Fund, that is the U.S.-dominated financial institution, the IMF. They published a report in March that acknowledged that there is a, quote, erosion of dollar dominance. And they said there were several reasons, but two of the most 